Hello YouTube, Bane666 here. So my last video was on an article called Understanding Men's Rights Activists and Their Lingo, in which the author made the incredible claim that basically anyone who isn't a social justice warrior is a men's rights activist. He even went as far as to say a baseball team is a collection of men's rights activists. They're just passive about it. Yes, that's right. They're passive activists. <laughs> but that article had a citation to another article which I want to look at today. And that's called Things Women Are Expected to Do at Work But Shouldn't by Chica Reyes, written three months ago. Here's a list of infuriating things women are expected to do courtesy of this goddamn white supremacist patriarchy. Uh, yeah, this article almost reads like it's, uh, it's a Poe article. It's so bad. And the reason I want to go through this is because it demonstrates feminist privilege. How they're blind, totally fucking blind, to the real world and, and issues that men face. Because the things that Chica Reyes uh, talks about are, are not things which should be considered to be oppression. And in some cases, they're actually advantages, as we'll see. Now, I was going to focus just on this one article, but I then discovered another article on the same website by Lauren Skopolsky from two months ago called 10 Rights That Women Don't Have But Men Do. If America is so good for women, why is access to equal protection under the law bodily autonomy and fair pay, a set of rights that women don't have, but men do. Because America is not so good for women. Bodily autonomy, really. So men have bodily autonomy rights in America, but women don't. Hmm. That's, that's a very strange argument to make. Now, going through this second article, I discovered that many of the the arguments made in things women are expected to do at work but shouldn't are also made in 10 rights that women don't have but men do. So I thought I'd do the video on both of them and uh, I, I'm guessing this is going to be more than one video because there is quite a bit of material to get through. But when I read the second article I thought for a second it must be written by the same author uh, but to my surprise it's not. Anyway, let's get stuck into it because we do have a lot of female oppression to uh, to look at and to sort through and um, to make excuses for on behalf of the white supremacist uh, Trump supporting neo-Nazi patriarchy, which uh, which I'm sponsored by or something. I think I don't know. So the first one I want to look at is a very, very serious issue, uh, which you know more feminists I think should be focused on. It is um, it is a crime against females, and should be taken extremely seriously. And that is the crime that women have to pay for tampons and pads. I know it's horrendous. <laughs> so so it says. Among the many things women are expected to do is pay for their own pads or tampons. Oh, that's that's uh, that's horrendous. Surely other people, namely men, uh, should be paying for pads and tampons of women. You know, just to make up for the millions of years of oppression. <laughs> it goes on to say, Meanwhile, if dudes had periods... There would be tampons on sale everywhere, and they'd get them for free at work. <laughs> now, it may shock some of you, but I don't buy tampons or pads. Um, I know, that's, that's shocking. So, I've never had to buy tampons or pads, but I would assume that they're readily available 
in many places. The way she makes it sound here is that you have to go to a special shop and then you have to go to the back room and, you know, uh, you, you have to hand over the cash and they hand you the pads and tampons in a brown paper bag under the counter when no one's looking, uh, which, of course, wouldn't be the, you know, the, uh, the way things work if men had periods. If that was the case, they would just have them in, you know, chemist shops and supermarkets and things like that. But clearly, we're living in a white capitalist, white supremacist, neo-Nazi uh, patriarchy. So, you know, that's just not the case. As for getting them free at work, I, I would have spent a little bit of time talking about this. Why the fuck should you get them free at work? How is that the responsibility of your employer? I mean, we're talking about adults here. And clearly adults have the capacity, have the autonomy to spend their money on, on necessities that they need, including things like pads and tampons. Now, in many, many workplaces, men are required to be clean-shaven. Uh, I don't hear cries that razors should be given to male employees free of charge, despite the fact that we're apparently living in a patriarchy which looks after every single man's needs, uh, despite, you know, the oppression of women. And nor should workplaces give men free razors. Once again, men get paid by the company. They're capable of going to the shop and buying necessities like razors. That's what adults do. It's not the, uh, it's not the responsibility of your workplace to provide you with something like that. It's not like it's fucking safety gear or something. That's completely different. Now, I know the argument here is that, well, you know, it's not the fault of women that they, they get periods and... It's a, it's a necessity that they pay for pads and tampons, etc., etc. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, it's a necessity that I eat food. Is that now the responsibility of my workplace to provide me with free lunches every day? Now, yes, I know some workplaces do that. They're a rarity, and there's usually a special reason for it. But it's definitely not standardised, and nor should it be. Now, some workplaces may uh, provide something like a cafeteria, but you still have to pay for your own food. You don't get the food for free. And you know what? I, I wouldn't mind a similar thing for tampons. You know, if they want tampon dispensers in female toilets, uh, I don't have a problem with that. You go in, you put in your dollar or whatever it costs, and you press a button and a tampon comes out. No issue, right? But your workplace shouldn't have to provide it for you for fucking free. It's not their fucking responsibility. And it, it just amazes me that this author thinks that it's somehow a workplace's responsibility. If this isn't privilege, I, I don't know what is. Anyway, it goes on to say, dudes also wouldn't have to use euthanisms like feminine hygiene products... They talk about bleeding so freely that Eve Ensler would blush. Um, yeah, I can imagine that men, if they had periods, might be, you know, talking about bleeding. But you know who would criticize them if they did? Women. Women would call them fucking disgusting if they were talking about their periods. Just like, you know, many women criticize men who talk about farts or or something like that so i don't see that uh, it would be any different if men had periods they would get criticized for by women for talking about them but apparently you know the patriarchy would somehow prevent women from criticizing them or something i i don't know so there is a similar argument in 10 rights that women don't have but men do regarding tampons and periods so let's have a look at that one women have less bodily autonomy really it says women have to pay for their own tampons and pads now i want you to think about this for a second 
I want you to really fucking consider this for a second. The author is saying that women have less bodily autonomy because women have to pay for tampons and pads out of their own money. And at the same time, she's completely ignoring the fact that newborn baby boys not only have their genitals mutilated against their will, but in America, where the author comes from, this is in fact promoted. Now, I don't know how you can compare these two things and somehow conclude that women have less bodily autonomy than men. Paying for your own tampons and pads has absolutely nothing to do with bodily autonomy. Having your genitals mutilated at birth without your permission has everything to do with bodily autonomy. So not only is this incredibly fucking ignorant, but it's also incredibly fucking offensive. Anyway, it goes on to say, If men had periods, pads and tampons would be free everywhere. Yeah, just like razors are free everywhere, right? Because men don't have to pay for razors. The patriarchy just provides it for them for free. Right? Oh, hold on. That, that doesn't happen, does it? It goes on to say, Women also too often get side eye if they breastfeed in public, even though it's a natural process. Our own society encourages as indispensable for the healthy growth of children. Now, I know not everyone is going to agree with me on this, but I don't have a problem with women breastfeeding in public. It goes on to say, Then there's women's reproductive rights, which are too often governed by men. Um, yeah, at least women have reproductive rights, right? And it goes on to say, Even the temperature in offices is often calibrated with the male metabolism as the figure taken into account. It never ends with the rights that women don't have, but men do. So officers being a little bit chilly for women means that women have less human rights. D do you see what I mean about this sounding like it's a Poe article? But I'm, I'm sure it's not because we, we had a... Another feminist article which was serious, uh, linking to an article on this site. So I'm assuming that this isn't a PO. And, you know, we've heard this argument before. In fact, uh, the first article also makes this argument about officers being a little bit chilly. Although it doesn't say that it's a, a human rights issue. It just sums it up as deal with worse conditions. Now... Remember, this first article is about the workplace. So it's totally ignoring the fact that the vast majority of workplace deaths are, in fact, male. And apparently women are the ones dealing with worse working conditions. So let's, let's have a look at this. There are all these things that women are expected to do and the tools and the conditions in which they're supposed to do them are inhospitable towards women. Hmm, I wonder, I wonder what examples will be given. Women working down coal mines, maybe. Women working in sewers. I, I don't know. Let's, let's read on and find out. A few years ago, the Washington Post ran an article about how products gendered towards women are of lower quality than those gendered towards men. Now, we'll come back to this citation in a little bit because the second article also makes this same argument linking to the same citation. I'm sure that's just a coincidence, though. Anyway, it goes on to say, The temperature in most office buildings is set using a formula that's informed by male metabolism. <laughs> Yes, so let's let's be clear here, folks. The real issue isn't the fact that the vast majority of workplace deaths are male. You know, over 9 out of 10 workplace deaths are, are male. That's not important. What's important is that some women feel a little bit chilly in offices. 
I mean, if that's not true oppression, I don't know what is. What better argument for the patriarchy than that, really? And it goes on to say, And women's clothing is often so threadbare that job wear ruining holes develop on the regular. No citation, I see. Now, I do find this a strange argument. And as there's no citation, I can't look it up to see whether it's true or not. However, if I were to speculate, I would say that maybe it's because women buy different types of clothing and that those different types of clothing are made out of different material because not all material wears at the same rate. Just for example, um, I th now I'm not an expert on this, but I would assume that denim is going to last a lot longer than silk. I've never worn silk, so I can't say firsthand. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I, I would assume, and I think it's a pretty safe assumption, that if you put an item of clothing made out of silk under the same conditions as a, an item of clothing made out of denim, that the silk will wear out much, much quicker. So my question would be, uh, women buying clothing which is less durable, but more comfortable to wear. Now, I'm not suggesting men wear denim into offices or, or anything like that, but it is perfectly feasible that women would wear something like silk. So in other words, uh, to sum up, it, it's not that women's clothing is made to a lesser standard. It's that a percentage of women choose to buy clothing which is more comfortable, but the material is less durable. That's a trade-off you're going to have to just fucking live with. I'm sorry, but it's got nothing to do with the white supremacist, neo-Nazi, Trump-supporting capitalist patriarchy which is oppressing all the women's. Anyway, the paragraph finishes off this white supremacist patriarchy would be so much easier to dismantle if it was made for women because it would just fall apart after a few uses. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anyway, uh, I said I was going to look at that citation, so let's have a look at the second article and see where that uses it. Women pay more for less. Hmm. Mary Claire ran a comparison on several products and found that on average, women pay more for products like socks, shampoo, and deodorant. Yes, because those products are different. But the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs ran its own study and found that out of 800 products, those marketed towards men are of higher quality than those marketed towards women. Of course they are. Once you know America is a patriarchy, then you can assume that male products would be, on the whole, better than female ones. That's what a patriarchy is. Even when the stakes are at their lowest, there are many rights that women don't have but men do. So apparently this is a human rights issue right here. The fact that apparently women are paying more for less or the same products. So let's have a look at the citation because uh, there's an interesting little thing that I picked up on. Now, one of the products that they show are razors. You know, those razors that men don't get for free from their workplaces. Now, come on, patriarchy. You're really letting men down. Anyway, it says... Walgreen, for example, peddled a blue box of Schick Hydro 5 cartridges for $14.99. The Schick Hydro Silk, its purple sibling, was priced at $18.49. Well, this is clearly a slam dunk, isn't it? Clearly, it's uh, the patriarchy charging women more for raises than men because... Uh, women are oppressed and men hate women or something like that. Uh, I wonder, could there possibly be another explanation? 
Now, feminists who talk about the pink tax are basically telling you that women are idiots. Uh, now, let me stress, this is what they're telling you, uh, not what I believe. They are basically telling you that there are two products which are exactly the same, with the only difference being one is blue and one is pink, or one in a pink package and one in a blue package. And for some reason... Women are incapable of buying the blue one and using it. Their little lady brains are just not complex enough to not care about the color, right? Use it. They're willing to pay an extra 3 or $4 to use something which is pink as opposed to blue. And uh, this somehow makes them oppressed. And that really is the simplest explanation. If you believe that there is no difference between those products, if men's razors and women's razors are exactly the same, just use the fucking cheaper ones. It doesn't matter if it's fucking blue or pink or whatever. Okay, if, if a woman tries to leave a supermarket with a, a box of men's razors, she's not going to be stopped by security they're not going to demand that she pay an extra 3 or $4 because she's a woman. This is ludicrous. Of course, the other explanation is that there is a difference between these products. So let's have a look at these razors, shall we? So looking at the details, uh, there are clear differences. For example, the standard male one has a hydrate gel with coconut oil. Whereas the Hydro Silk Razor instead has a serum formulated with shea butter. Now, I'm not an expert on these things. Uh, I honestly don't know what the difference is between shea butter and coconut oil. I don't know if one's better for some reason or, or whatever. But the point is, there is a difference. And if you like shea butter more than coconut oil buy the silk if you don't like shea butter more just buy the standard ones no big deal and there's also the hydro 5 sense sensitive which is for more sensitive skin and that's got a comfort gel with herbal extracts so there's lots of options and that's the point all these razors are slightly different and you can pick the one that suits you. And if it's more expensive and you think it's worth it, then you pay the money. If it's not, then just go for the fucking standard one. This shouldn't be a big deal. But just out of curiosity, I thought I'd do a quick search on the internet and check out the prices for these three different razors. So I just picked the two first ones at random and uh, the first store is Priceline and the Schick Hydro 5 4 pack is $19.99. So that's just the standard male one with coconut oil. And the silk version is $19.29. So it's actually a little bit cheaper in this case. And the one for sensitive skin is $23.99. So that's the most expensive one of all, right? And I found the same thing on Amazon, basically. There the Hydro 5 is $11.72. The Hydro Silk is just a little bit more expensive at $13.19. And the Hydro Sense Sensitive Men's Razor is $14.68. So that's more expensive than the Hydro Silk. Once again, these razors are slightly different. They're not exactly the same. And that accounts for the price difference. If you don't like one, just buy one of the others. Or one of hundreds of other razors by other companies. Why is this fucking an issue? Seriously. Now, one of the other items that they show is uh, the scooters for kids. Now the pink one is $49.99 and the red one is $24.99. And uh, according to the picture they do look exactly the same apart from colour. So I honestly can't say why there would be a price difference. Now the assumption is that the pink one is for girls and the red one is for boys. Now I can understand uh, the assumption about the pink one. 
because girls tend to want to buy things which are pink. But is red now a male colour? Why is red suddenly a, a colour associated with males? Are there no little girls buying red ones? Uh, what about other colours? What price are the blue ones and the green ones? Are there any others which aren't pink, which are forty nine ninety nine? Maybe the red ones are cheaper because they've got a fucking truckload of them and they can't sell them. I, I don't know. There's no way of really telling. But I would suggest this is just cherry picking. Anyway, I think I'll leave it there for now and I'll do more in part two uh, sometime next month when I get around to it. Do I smell manly? Oh, you do. Yeah? You smell delectable. You want to smell me? No. Women's body care and bath products can be expensive as hell. And a lot of the time, it's more expensive than guy stuff. Is it all a marketing ploy? Or is the stuff we use actually better? It's ladylike, and today we're taking on the pink tax. The pink tax is what we call the extra money that it costs to buy women marketed products, especially with like razors and with body wash. I think that women have more options. Of course, some will be more expensive, but I think that, you know, guy stuff is not as fun or exciting. I will pay a little bit more just to know that like my hair is moisturized and that my curls are being taken well care of. Basically, I'll pay any amount of money for a good hair product. Marketing companies kind of play off of that and feel like they can get away with more expensive things because women consume it more. I think guys' products are like, there's less frills to them, so it's easy to find cheap versions. I'm very susceptible to a good deal. Go to Target. Section. How do you know it's for men? It'll say for like rugged. Probably gonna be the tiniest man section. It's like yeah. all women. I feel like we need to get two in one. Three in one. Look at this. Whoa. Is this for men though? This looks kind of. Oh, it's kids. It's for kids. It's for children. Now, do they have a men's ethnic section, or do women only have the ethnic section? Clean cut look. Classic pomade. I could use this for my edges. It's Why do stuff. boys always want two in one? Like, why don't? What? This one is with caffeine and menthol. Maybe I need that. I don't know. I guess I just don't want to smell like an asshole. Axe Apollo, Axe Phoenix. What option do I have? This is the oh. face wash I use. There's no organic stuff. For no me. organic stuff for guys. Not everything. Wait, we lost Freddy. Freddy? Oh. Well, okay, Freddy's dead, and this video is taking a very different turn. We found Freddy. Hi. I had to go get a birthday card. <laughs> Freddy, we all need things from Target, okay? <laughs> Just traded in all of my girly shit for all the manly shit. Also, can we talk about how this says volcano powered sweat destroyer with palm tree scent? Okay, so I have the shampoo in my hair and the first thing I noticed is that it smells so strong. Okay, so I just went to yoga. This men's deodorant is doing the trick. This is what happens when you have thick hair and you use two in one shampoo. So I just used the Axe shampoo two-in-one. It doesn't feel super moisturized. I shaved my legs probably 24 hours ago. They feel pretty darn smooth. I will say that my hair looks crazy, but it feels soft. Pretty into the body wash. It felt really good in the shower. Um, smelled pretty nice. It's a little strong for my taste. I smell so good right now. So maybe men's deodorant is for me. Look at that. Look at that man moisturizer. It's behaving like regular moisturizer. And the breakouts have begun. Pimply's popping up. Do I smell kind of like a man? No, you just smell nice. Oh, okay. Why doesn't it smell good? It's not your usual musk. All right, so I'm at Whole Foods, and this is like pretty much all of the selection 
that are just marketed for men. So I found some three-in-one natural man. So I think I'm gonna pick that up and see how that fares. So today is the last day of men's products. I really miss my normal products. It's been a journey. So I used men's personal care products for one week. I think I winked at more people this week because I was like, oh, I'm just sort of a dude. And then I was like, the first morning I woke up and I was like, there's a man in my bed. Nope, that's me. I had the most feelings about the deodorant. This deodorant is not antiperspirant and I'm mad about it. This deodorant did things for me. Normally, at this point in the day, I smell like B.O. on a stick. It smells great. It definitely smells like a dude. I like that smell. It wasn't that much of an adjustment. I don't know, I actually kind of liked the new smell. I kind of smelled like a metal pole. I did shave my legs the first day, and it was so nice. But the two-in-one shampoo was horrific. My hair didn't look terrible after I used it, but it was dry. The body slash face wash two-in-one thing broke me out horribly. But I will say the sort of natural body and face wash that I got from Whole Foods did work for my body and face. My boyfriend Paul uses women's shampoo. He uses my Shea Moisture shampoo because again, there really aren't that many options for ethnic hair for men. I would definitely buy men's versions of deodorant and razors for sure. I like consistency, so I'm probably not gonna switch to these products, but they worked fine. Most of these products are pretty much the same. It's more the selection and personal preference that comes into play. I could tell a difference. I just honestly, I wanna go home and wash my hair with expensive things. What body?